Hi there, this is David at Winco, and this is the third part of our little tutorial on UID labels, and we're going to focus on verifying the labels to ensure we meet all the requirements of MIL standard 130. And you can see on my screen here, this is the uh, MicroScan UID um, verification software. I'm connected up to my reader, and this is a UID label that I've successfully verified. And you can see it's a success because both parts of the results are green. Green is good. If either the validation, which is the formatting of the code, was incorrect, or the verification, which is the quality of the code, is incorrect, that particular part of it would have um, turned red. And I'm just going to walk you around a few of the interesting features before we get into some detail as to how I got to this point. First of all, in this box here, this is the actual raw data that was read um, when I verified this particular label. You can see it has the usual header, the open bracket, close parentheses, greater than sign, then the record separator, the 06 that says we're using data identifiers, and a group separator, 17V, which is the data identifier for cage code, followed by the customer's cage code, the group separator, 1P for part number, followed by the part number, then a group separator, then S, which is the data identifier for serial number, followed by the serial number, and then finally the ASCII record separator and end of transmission characters. So everything is there, and you can see that in my validation, um, it's correctly been identified as a construct 2, which is good because that's what I wanted it to be. And here's the three data elements, the cage code one, the part number one, and the serial number one. Um, as you can see here, I've scored all A's for all of the different parameters that are um, verified. Some of the key ones are the overall grade, which um, basically has to be a B or better. Um, mine's an A, so that's good. The contrast, and then um, going down to the bottom here, the actual cell size, and the standard says it has to be between 7.5 and 25 mil. Um, this particular one is 8.1 mil, so that's happy. I can also um, click on to view result here, and this is more like the report that the system actually produces. So again, it's telling me that, it, that it's passed. Um, it tells me just a sequence number. This is the number of the result that um, was done. It's construct two, and we're using data identifiers, my three data elements. Here's the embedded UII, so it's the concatenated cage code, part number, and serial number, with a D put in front of it, because we were using a cage code. Here's the raw data, and then we go into more detail on the results, when this unit was calibrated, and all of the actual values here. So, And this is stored both as an HTML file with its associated graphic file, and also can be stored as a database file and as a CSV file as well. So we have some flexibility as to how we handle these search results. So I'm going to get out of there, and I'm actually going to close the UID software, and you'll see what happens when I start it up. Um, there's a little beep there. Uh, this is actually the calibration card that we're going to be using in a couple of minutes to calibrate this reader to make sure that everything's good with it. So I'm actually going to start my UID checker software. And the first thing that it's going to do is it looks for a reader, and my one I called Winco, very imaginatively. It's um, connected already, and it takes a couple of while, a couple of seconds just to do its magic, but now it's ready. And just to show that it's working, if I click on live video here, and I wave my fingers underneath it, you can um, see that it is actually a live um, video there. And what I'm going to do is put my calibration card underneath the reader and what I do is I'm going to turn off the live video at this point and go into the reader menu and choose reflectance calibrate. Now these two values here the contrast and um, the maximum reflectance are handwritten on the card. They're, they're usually um, a decimal number I usually put um, the closest whole number to that. I just type them into the boxes and I click calibrate. A couple more beeps, the light on the reader goes on and off a bit, 
and it's basically done already and you can see it's given me a new um, date and time of when the calibration was done and I don't think it's really that necessary to calibrate this too regularly we usually calibrate our reader once a week or something or something like that I know other people leave it on um, longer periods but um, that should be good to go a couple of other things I want to show before we actually verify a label in the um, reader menu first of all if I go into verification type and um, over the years of MIL standard 130 there have been a number of different verification types that have um, been, been introduced the latest one is the AIM DPM dash one dash two thousand and six and this one is good in that it was actually specifically developed by the Auto ID Manufacturers Association as a verification standard for UID and it works very very well in, in real life it is very forgiving and is very acceptable so that's what I tend to use and I would suggest that you use that as well unless for some reason your DCMA QA rep says you can't or your contract specifically says you can't so I always choose MIL standard 130N and AIM DPM 2006 so that's what I'm going to use in there and it takes just a second to, to work there I also going to go into the results setup okay in my result results setup um, I automatically want to save the result there's not much point in reading them if um, I don't save that and I also want to store an image with the result so that I have an actual image of the barcode for that label by default the verifier saves them as bitmap files which turn out to really fill up those directories quickly so I always check off the convert images to JPEG which is a lot smaller file I want to see my verification um, details so I, I check off this one I want to see the decoded data above the image that's in this area here so I, d I keep that checked off I also want to um, have a database and a CSV file stored um, along with the results so I tend to check that one off as well had I got a variance to override those cell size restrictions I would check this, um, this box off here and then the other thing I can do is I can change the results path the path to the folder where the results are actually stored um, you can see in my case I'm just storing them in a folder called UID on my desktop and that, and that works out fine for me so I'm going to close that and you can see I actually verified um, a label just now and I'm going to verify this one again and you can see that um, it's actually failing on validation and the reason this is failing on validation is that this is actually the um, calibration card and the data that's in there basically says DMX size 240 it isn't a UID at all so it's failed and it tells me that it's failed because of the first um, header character isn't the um, open bracket um, element that, as it should have been so it's failed on validation but being the calibration card the quality is great so it's actually passed on quality but it's failed on, on validation on the structure of the code so I'm going to take that one out and in its place I'm going to put my an actual um, UID label and I'm going to verify this one it takes just a second and now we're back um, pretty much where we started you can see that um, it's all green so everything is happy I can click on to view result and here's all my information it, it's passed here's the time that, that, I, that I did this verification here are the, here are the details here's my embedded UII which is very important because that number is some um, part of the data that you need to send up to the WAF or to the UID registry when you make your submission here's the, the raw data that's encoded in there so that's all of the validation part of things so the structure of the data is correct and then down the rest of the um, report is the verification or the quality side so once you get this set up it's pretty straight pretty straightforward just um, make sure that you keep those results um, those result reports because they can be very very useful I tend to if I'm only doing a few for a customer I'll often print the result um, screens as PDFs to send to them otherwise I just keep them in the raw format which is an HTML file for the data with the embedded um, in my case a JPEG file so that's how to set up and use the verifier should you have any questions feel free to get in touch with me and I'll be happy to help thanks very much